Hello everybody, this is Andy, and welcome to episode 6 of Omnifactory. And today we're going to get really, really into it. I've set up a little bit of a thing over here so we can set up auto-crafting. Um, I'm going to have one machine here, one machine under here, and then hopefully more machines on top as soon as we need them. However, I don't think we'll need them today. But it's there, set up, just in case in the future we need it. Um, so, first things first. In this episode, I want to set up circuit making for applied energistics. And as you can see, I have a ton of logic processors because these are used to make ME interfaces in the form of these formation and annihilation cores. So let's go ahead and put together maybe half a stack, maybe full stack of ME interfaces, and then we can move on with our lives. However, before we get into like ME interfaces and all that kind of stuff, let's make sure we can make them forever. We need to automate the stuff for applied energistics before we can automate things with applied energistics. So what I have here is a line of seven advanced inscribers. Four of these are going to be used to make the press mold things or whatever, and the last three over here will be dedicated one to each of these processor types. Um, so. The main issue with these things is I'm going to need to run another line of this on top of over here, I think, because these guys all use the plate types. And I'm going to need to smelt things like silicon because I have it in dust form over in the uh, where that where I make um, aluminum. If you check my ME interface, I now have 13,000 silicon dust. Um, so yeah, I'm going to need to run machines to automate these. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly, set up this line, and then create some of the machines that we're going to need. All right, there's the CEF, and let's just run a couple of these energetic wires to start. I think that will actually cover us for all the machines that we need to make. So first things first, let's start with... Uh, logic, I suppose. So for this stuff, we're going to need a compressor, and that's it. I keep forgetting that I have an ME interface over here, and I don't have to run all the way over there to craft stuff. So, a compressor. That is going to be made like that, and can I make it? Ooh, I literally can just make it. Perfect. So, let's run this, like, right here, maybe? Yeah, that should work. And from here, all I'm going to have to do is export bus some gold into this bad boy, and it should begin compressing. Okay. Wonderful. Now I just need a couple item conduits if I can. Thank you. And then I'll just pull out of this somehow and throw it into here. Let's extract on brown. That should be good. And then I can disconnect to this right here just because it looks stupid. And this will begin creating the printed logic circuits. Let's push that out. Or, well, I guess we can't push out using these inscribers, so we'll pull out using item conduits and into a drawer. There we go. One drawer and a couple more item conduits underneath, just like that. And I'll just extract this one on green, insert on green, and we're getting the printed circuits. Except the drawer is placed weird. I want it like that. Thank you. Um... Actually, before we go too far here, let's turn this off, and I want to put a downgrade in this. I want to only store at a maximum one stack of each type of the circuits. I don't want to overload my system and have too many resources going in too many places just right now. Okay, so this is as simple as throw one of these downgrades in, and now this thing will max out at one stack in the drawer and one stack in here. So I'll have two stacks reserve. That's pretty good. Um, so next up is silicon, it looks like. Silicon is going to be slightly different because we're going to need a redstone furnace, or not a redstone furnace, an electric furnace, and also a compressor. So, let's see. MV furnace. Can I just make it? No. Uh, I'm going to make these couple machines and I'll be right back. Okay, they are made. I have actually made two electric furnaces, so we have that now. However, that's okay. Um, let's throw these right here. And right here and then I'll need a conveyor to push wait no I can just do that and do that and then I will pull out of this just like that on let's say blue and I can simply export silicon dust into here so I can use my export bus actually because I already have one and then I need to grab a little bit of silicon dust if I may and 
there we go. This thing should start getting silicon dust. It should turn into ingots. It should go right here, get compressed, and then thrown directly into this guy, right? And it starts working. So now I just need to pull into a drawer again, and I'll set that up on my own. And we have that second one set up. The next one we have to set up is calculation. And this is very similar to the other ones. I'm going to have to pull out and compress. Um, so I'm not going to make you watch this, and I just deleted my compressor thing, didn't I? Um, I'm not going to make you watch this because it's literally the same. However, I will come back for the diamond one because that one is going to be significantly more complicated than all of the other ones that we have to do. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right, it's a little bit cramped back here, but this is what I'm doing for the um, what's it called? Engineering presses? So it's got to be a little bit different. I need a mechanical crafter here because instead of just compressing diamonds, you have to turn them into block form and then cut them. So what I just simply have left to do is grab a diamond from here. One diamond, thank you. And then I shove it into the export bus and it should start exporting into the mechanical crafter. So all that I have to do is do that, take my diamond nuggets, throw them into the corner because they're useless, and then this should begin crafting diamond blocks as soon as possible. These diamond blocks will get shoved into here if I add a couple item conduits just like that. We'll extract on green, that's just perfectly fine, and as you can see, block of diamond should get extracted in theory. However, it is not for some reason. Hmm... For some unknown reason, it cannot be extracted. For, I, I, just, I just simply don't know why. So I'm hoping if I put a conveyor module right there and grab my screwdriver so I can configure it, I should just be able to import and it does pull the diamonds. So um, I've had that problem before in this world. I'm not entirely sure why. Sometimes item conduits just simply don't work. Um, and yeah, they're working over here. Maybe it has something to do with like chunk borders or something like that, but item conduits don't work all of the time. Now, the only thing left here is since this is working, is to export into a nice little drawer. And I'll set this up on my own so you don't have to watch. And it's doing it again right here. As you can see, the circuits are in there. I have this configured to insert and I have this configured to extract. And it is on always active, so it should be pulling. However, it's simply not. I'm going to hope and pray that logging out and logging back in will fix this problem, but we will see. Wait, no, hold on. This is my fault, actually, right here. I locked the drawer too early? Yeah, I locked the drawer too early. Um, there is still a problem with item conduits. I just don't know when it happens and why it happens. However, that gives us all four of the things that we need to make these circuits. So all I'm going to have to do is throw some export buses onto these and th some drawers next to them. And we should be ready to start auto crafting. All right, I've just made a ton of storage buses and I'm going to need to storage bus each of these guys if I can get around to them. This place is such a tight squeeze. However, I, uh, I don't mind it. Um, so I'm also going to need to storage bus like that, that, and that, and that should be good. So if we go over here, we should be able to see, say, press, I think? No. Uh, circuit. Yeah, we can see these are now in our system, which means we can, let's say, take some of them and use these to export into each of these. So let's do, say, calculation first. We'll throw a bunch of calculation into there. And then we'll do engineering next. So we'll throw a ton of engineering into there. And then we'll do logic. So a bunch of logic goes into there. Now, the next thing I need to export into all of these is the actual circuits. As you can see, I've got quite a few, over a thousand. Since I did let that system backlog, it's completely filled up, and whenever I take a stack out, it fills a stack right back up really, really quickly. So, electronic circuits in there, electronic circuits in there, electronic circuits in there, and I'll throw a ton in there, for, I guess, for starters. Um, the one thing that is going to be our, like, um, our bottleneck, I suppose, is going to be the silicon. Um, I should probably let this backlog a little bit higher than what I have it right now. So let's actually go over here to the template, uh, template, there we go, 
and I'll make one of these. Should This should allow it to store, instead of just one stack of silicon, as you can see, it should be able to store four now. So that'll allow a slightly bigger backlog if I use a ton of these circuits all at once. So let's go ahead, grab this guy, and also export this into all of these. And then it should, in theory, begin creating these circuits or the processors. Those I need to shove into these drawers and then we should be able to see them on our system. Um, I need to make sure to downgrade them so we don't make a billion of all of them. However, I will do that on my own and I will see you back in just a moment. And now, given this system, at any given time, I should be able to just go into my ME system and see at least a stack of each of these. So in theory, it's going to back up a stack into the drawer and it's stacking here. So I will have about two stacks of any processor available to me at any given time. So what we can do now is just allow this to run for forever. This is a fairly robust system and it should have no problems continuing to just like go. Um, the one thing that I have in this system that is not completely infinite is the um, Certus. As you can see, I have 124 Certus left and it's dropping. Um, that's not amazing. Um, so I'm gonna have to go mining for Certus every now and again because it's just not, I don't think there's any way to get this stuff infinitely. Um, I can mine out an entire vein in a couple seconds and like, you know, get a bunch of it, but it's still time that I have to spend. So this is the one thing that I'm going to have to keep in mind that I'm going to have to go mining for every now and again. However, you can get so much of it in one trip, it's not really a huge deal. Oh, also, I do want to mention, as you can see, our aluminum has finished backing up into this drawer, and now I have 4,000 pieces of aluminum. And the reason I have so much so fast, I haven't actually let this run for too, too long. I set up the second blast furnace, which I didn't have doing anything, to also be creating aluminum at HV. I'm probably going to take this one out because I don't think it's necessary anymore now that we have such a huge backlog. However, it was nice to get the backlog started very quickly. And I want to delay some of these so we can get started and create a bunch of these ME interfaces and get started with auto crafting. The one thing that we're going to need in addition to the ME interfaces is some of these coprocessors and some crafting storage. I'll probably start with 4K since this is fairly simple to make and fairly cheap. Yeah, I'm just going to need some red alloy plates and yeah how are these looking oh those are cheap too okay so we can get a couple of crafting cpus going um and we should be good to go it's going to take me a couple minutes to get all this stuff together but once we put this together i should never truly have to craft anything by hand ever again one of those things that can never actually be fully automated at least because i'm lazy uh and i have my thing on i have to turn this off bye bye uh this is an in-world crafting step. There is no way to make flukes dust not in-world. As you can see, it just pops when you throw it into water. Um, you would have to set up like a dropper to drop all the items into actual water and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if I'll ever do that. I might just handcraft it like in huge, huge quantities later in the game. But for right now, we're doing we're doing pretty good. And I need this stuff to make the processors into other things like these glass cables and the quartz fibers and all that kind of good stuff. To get into auto crafting, we're going to need some new terminals. First of all, the interface terminal, and that's put off the list. Second of all, we're going to need a pattern terminal. However, this is going to require a blank pattern, and blank patterns require, if you remember from earlier episodes, tier 3 circuits. Uh, fluid terminal, actually very simple let's go ahead and make one of those really quickly because this is going to allow us to see all the fluids that we have on our network um, so now we need to get into this pattern terminal however to do that I need to make another assembling machine because all of my assembling machines are in use in one way or another so let's go ahead and make one of these bad boys and ooh, this is gonna be tough okay I'll be back in a moment Okay, I made a couple of these electronic processor arrays and we can get our first blank patterns. Wonderful. As well as another assembling machine. And this can be used very simply to just make 
the next tier circuits and also some other recipes and how the heck am i supposed to get up here dude um there we go that's where that assembling machine is gonna live i'm gonna need a fluid export bus tin into it however that's fine so now i can make this pattern terminal if i wait do i not have panels Oh wait, do I have to turn it into a terminal first? I do have to turn it into a terminal first. My bad. And there we go, the pattern terminal. And that is all of our terminals. So I just need a place to put all of these bad boys. Um, I've kind of just set up a bunch of these crafting terminals around wherever I think I'll need them. So they're just kind of everywhere. Like I have, I think I have four of them around. However, I do have one extra in here right yep so we can find a central location where we want like our base to be and i can shove a bunch of these down um i don't know where that's going to be so let me think for a moment and we'll figure it out you know for the time being i think right here might not actually be the worst place in the world to put it so the way i set up my terminals is crafting terminal on the center right uh pattern terminal on the far right a fluid terminal on the far left, and an interface terminal right there. That's just how I prefer it. Um, you can set yours up differently, of course. It doesn't really change anything. It's just where I'm used to clicking to get into each of these things. So, let's go ahead and oh yeah before i uh, move on any further as you can see i've actually set up a couple of these interfaces and the reason i did this was to make the crafting for everything that i just made a little a little bit easier even though i couldn't automate any of this stuff yet um so what i can do is i can shove th or i can throw like say a stack of aluminum in here uh, i want a stack of aluminum i want more aluminum rods and you see they get pushed out automatically. What I'm doing is I'm using this interface as an import bus essentially. Um, so if you shove anything into the interface, like if you throw, if you push items into an interface, they get shoved up here. And look what happens when you put items up here. They go directly into your system. So what, how this works for um, Greg Tech machines is you have to wrench uh, the thing to the other side or like the export side to the other side and then you need to use a screwdriver to allow or disallow input from the output side so this means that I can both input items when I want to automate with applied energistics from the left side and also push to the left side to get the items out and send them into my system and complete the craft so that is is basically where we're heading next however let's first set up this assembling machine because that thing needs to get working i think that means i'm going to need to go over here and fluid storage bus the bunch of tin that i have yeah it doesn't have a storage bus on it and i should very simply be able to export this to the rest of my base because these fluid extractors are pretty quick um so let me fluid storage bus that and let's set up this second assembly machine to be able to craft second and third tier circuits. While I'm waiting for a couple of crafts to happen, let's actually go ahead and set up these uh, crafting CPUs and processors that I made. And I think I'm gonna do that over here. Um, I'm not sure how tall I'm gonna eventually want them to be. However, there is nothing that this space can really be used for besides like this room. So let's shove all of our CPUs right here. So how do I wanna do this right now? Let's just go ahead and start off nice and simple. And we have two CPUs, each with a Go processor, so they can do more than one task at once. And I just need to hook that up to my base somehow. And the way I think I'm going to do that is the same as I've done with everything else. Wow, I really cannot click right now. Let me get these back, please. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm going to shove them up into the roof and not worry about how it looks. Ooh, that is very much the sky. I didn't realize I was that close to the sky. Um, I know there is water over there, so I'm not gonna break those blocks, but I am gonna have to cover that up. Um, so let me connect this really quickly, and then we can begin the assembling machine thing set up. Okay, there we are. The tin is connected up to the system. It's a little janky. Um, I had to run the wire underneath and around and use some uh, conduit or uh, cable facade things or whatever they are from Applied Energistics to cover up the weird gap things that we got. However, I should now be getting tin in here. Perfect, because I am export busing tin directly into here. So what I can do now 
is use my very, very cool new pattern terminal and set up some patterns for the circuits. So basically what I can just do is turn this into a processing pattern and then shift click all that in there. So if I have this stuff on my network, it, I can use this pattern and one of these crafting CPUs to shove into this machine and have it create that thing. So how to do that is to go into here and find my advanced assembling machine, put it in there, and then if I go to here, and let's say I want some circuits, I want some of these circuits, give me one of these circuits. And it shows me I don't have transistors. So what I can do very simply to fix that is make this thing know how to make transistors. However, I can't do that yet because I don't have any ME interfaces connected to molecular assemblers. These molecular assemblers are required to do on-demand crafting like I can do in the crafting terminal. You don't need those to do crafting inside of machines because these interfaces can just push into the machines. So let's go ahead and probably try and make some molecular assemblers. But first, actually, I do kind of want to show you how this works really quickly. So let me just make a ton of these because I have a ton of stuff in the bank to do that. And I should just be able to say, hey, I want, I want 10 of these. Make me 10 of them. And let's see, the machine turns on and it begins creating the circuits and they get pushed back, just like I said, into this thing. And now if we go here, we have circuits, wonderful. So let's go ahead and make some molecular assemblers so we can finish all of our auto crafting and we can automate everything in the entire base. I am once again back at the bedrock because I need a lot more grains of infinity. So I'm gonna go burn this ground for like another 10 minutes and I'll be back. So while I'm waiting for some of these crafting recipes to finish up really quickly and I'm just kind of refilling them and oh these only stack up to 16. I'm glad I caught that when I did. I just put that iron in. That's real good. However let's talk about something that I think I should talk about right now before we really really get into automation as you can see and as you saw last episode i set up this very specific discrete system with machines dedicated to one specific task like i have this whole basic assembling machine here that is dedicated entirely to making resistors for this process and that's a little bit weird isn't it wouldn't it be more smart to just have an assembling machine that can do a bunch of things and then throw a crafting card in this guy and just have it run resistors when it needs resistors well I mean, potentially, yes. However, crafting cards can be really, really bad for performance. They can um, kind of screw up your world and destroy your TPS to the point where the game is essentially unplayable. Um, this happened to Jimmy Cow when the pack first came out, and I don't want to follow that path. I would really like to finish this pack, and I don't want to be hurting and like limping the final stages in. So I'm going to set up these discrete systems that will make one specific item using more machines than I technically have to. However, they will be dedicated to one specific task, so they will be quite good at what they do. And it looks like these have backed up actually. I was just kind of running around. But uh, these have finally backed up, which means we have a bunch of circuits and processors ready to be used. Um, the systems that I'm making are definitely going to be more robust than any crafting card could do. They're going to be more than necessary, however, I like doing things over the top, so we're going to keep doing them over the top. Kind of like this uh, aluminum I'm making right here, right now. Um, yeah, so I think things are just about finishing up being created, so let's jump back into the actual episode. I should now be ready to make 16 of these crafters. And yep, there we go, our, our calculations worked out correctly. So now that I have 16 of these crafters, I should also be ready to turn these into 16 molecular assemblers. Perfect, now I have 16 of these. I need to connect these two interfaces, um, and I'm gonna need a place to put them. So the way this pack works, since we don't have any channels, what I can essentially do is shove the largest blob of molecular assemblers and interfaces you've ever seen together at one point and really just not have to worry about it ever again. Um, I'm not sure where I want to shove these though. I might put them in this wall. I'm not sure though. Uh, let me find a place and dig it out and we'll start shoving our auto crafting stuff in there. 
All right, the place I decided we're gonna put all this stuff is actually directly underneath here. And I cleared out a pretty decent sized space. I don't think we'll need all of it. However, it's uh, no harm filling in a little bit more than we have to. So uh, it looks like I'm gonna have around two rows. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna alternate every single one. So we're gonna have a bunch of these just like this. And then we'll do the other ones just like that. And I suppose we'll do slightly more than two rows, and there we go. So that's enough molecular assemblers for a while. Um, I have found that these things sometimes don't like connecting, so I'm going to run a couple wires along just in case they don't do it correctly. However, if I run this directly up to here, we should be able to see all of those molecular assemblers on our system. So let's go back up there and check. And, yep, there they are, 16 molecular assemblers. That is going to last us a fair bit of time. So if I can actually probably just take one of these blocks and go cover that stuff up because we won't have to go back here for a while and I'm gonna cover it up from below so I don't have the stupid looking uh, pillar and then I'll just go ahead and slash home oh can't type there we go so first things first now that we have the capability to auto craft we need to be able to auto craft all of the things that allow us to auto craft so let's go ahead and turn this ordic substitution off i don't want that i was trying to get it to work and apparently it's not pulling correctly which is fine so now i can craft these blank patterns so if i just throw this into the molecular assembler and say hey dude give me uh not that give me a blank pattern i want one blank pattern it's going to make me a blank pattern just like that and if I say, hey, I want, I want some more blank patterns, it's going to say, oh, wait, you don't have any of these electronic processor arrays. Let me craft one for you. And then it'll craft one for me, as you can see in here. And, oh, I guess it has to make some of these tier circuits too, which is fine because I have everything I need to craft those. And it will just go ahead and craft me the blank patterns, which I can go ahead and shove in here and make more auto crafting stuff. Um, that's perfect. What do we do next? I think the next step is going to be automating all of the stuff that we need to craft these tier, these the second and third tier circuits. This is going to be actually very, very simple. Um, all I'm going to need to do is know how to craft Electrum, which I can have an infinite amount of if I just go ahead and automate Silver, which can be done with a gas data model, which I have at superior tier. Um, this one is super easy, I just need another assembler with polyethylene inside of it. So let's do that first. I'm gonna need an assembler. Let me make one of those. So I've gone ahead and put some crafting recipes in here, just kind of trying to automate the first few MV components or the main few MV components. And right now I'm working on setting up a couple more assemblers, which I'll probably do in between episodes because those are fairly boring and I just need like a polyethylene one and one to make like cases and all that kind of stuff. So. I think, however, I'm going to have to end the video here because I am pretty out of time for today. I think I'm quite over time. I know I say this every time, but I'm pretty sure I'm quite over time this time. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.